What's crack like it's your boy bro Schmo. just in case you did not know so and today we're taking a look at the 2020 NFL draft prospects on the offensive line and basically some guys hey keep your eye out for them in this upcoming college football season but first I want to just thank everyone who's uh who's decided to become a bro who's uh subscribed we're at uh we're almost at 100 and that's that's awesome and so if you if you're new here and you like the content um, give it a thumbs up and go ahead and uh, subscribe. It's much appreciated. Anyway, let's go ahead and get in. First and foremost, I want to talk about... Uh, I misspelled the word tackles up there. You may not have noticed it, but if anyone did, I'm not going to get flack for it in the comment section. I know I messed up. I made a mistake. My bad. But let's talk about Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas out of Georgia, man. A Georgia offensive line's produced uh, some quality talent the last couple of years. Um... And they're gonna do it again here. Anthony or uh, Andrew Thomas is just—he's big, he's strong, so strong. He moves, he moves people against their will, and you you want to see that in your tackles. Uh, and he's also very athletic. I think he is. When all things are said and done, he will be the top offensive lineman uh, taken this year, or next year, I should say, in the draft. But a guy who could put his. Uh, Put his name in the mix there is Trey Smith out of Tennessee. Trey Smith, uh, he started off at guard, graded extremely well, played tackle very well last year, but his season was cut short because he had blood clots in his lungs. So that was a big worry, a big medical red flag there. But it sounds like it, he's coming back. He is going to be playing ball at Tennessee there. Uh, he should be... Um, there at the beginning of uh the season opener so that's great to hear and hopefully uh hopefully he plays very well i like trey smith a lot uh next we got walker little out of stanford he's been a model of consistency last few years now this is my knock on walker little because people are very high on him uh i just think he's he needs to get a little more athletic because we saw guys like um, Dalton Reisner this past year out of Kansas State. He had a very, very great career at Kansas State. Um, but at the Senior Bowl, he got beat by a lot of speed rushers. People were getting around him, so people thought he wasn't athletic, or scouts thought he wasn't athletic enough to play tackle. So we saw what I thought was a first round talent drop into the mid uh, second round. So. I'm not saying this is an identical situation with Walk a Little. I'm just saying that um, just something to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, Trey Adams, I got here at number four. Uh, again, we go back to the medical red flags. He hasn't had played, I believe, a full year of uh, college football. Um, so honestly, he's he's got top 15 potential. I just want to see a full year healthy. Next five, I got Tristan Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs might not even come out this year, but there is a lot to like about Tristan here. He is he's gonna he's gonna blow up the combine. The dude is so strong, super strong. Oh man. Uh the only knock right now is he a guard or is he a tackle? Can he work on his pass protection this year and get better at that? Um, if so, then he we he can skyrocket his stock, honestly. But Again, we have to wait and see. Uh, at six, I got Prince Tenga uh, Wanogoho. Um, hopefully, I said that right. But uh, Prince here, he has been a he has cemented his role as left tackle there at Auburn. The dude's got a big frame, six seven. Um, the dude is just a veteran, veteran there at Auburn. So uh, I expect to see his name get called early, kind of like how. Um, uh oh gosh i'm forgetting i'm blanking on his name but the cat out of washington uh they got drafted uh by atlanta but it's all good it's all good you know who i'm talking about <laughs> uh next i got calvin throckmorton uh dude is the only again another question is he a guard or is he a tackle um i think regardless uh he will he should be go somewhere in the second round if he plays uh, similar to what he did last year, he's coming back on a stacked Oregon team. So it's very excited to be uh, very excited 
should be a very exciting year in general for Oregon. But the guy's he's been very consistent there at Oregon, and he started a heck lot of games. Uh, at eight, I got a, someone who everyone's very high on. They think this guy's a first round pick. And I'm not saying he's not. Uh, Makai uh, Beckton. Um, this is what I have to say. The dude is extremely raw. He is extremely talented. He's super talented, man. He's 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 big. He looks the part. It's just with these guys who are raw, like with their technique, uh, their footwork, and all that. You end up drafting them that high. You get your Jason Smiths or your Greg Robinsons. You don't get your value for drafting that high. So I think he's right now a project. That's why I have him as a late second, maybe early third. At number nine, I got Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama. This guy's been in the rotation. He's been in the mix for uh, for Alabama, but now he takes over for Jonah Williams. So we get to see um, he could he has a big chance, a big opportunity to elevate his stock a ton. So just keep an eye out for that guy. Um, ten, Liam. Enchenberg, man, this is this Notre Dame offensive line is talented. So, uh, yeah, it, it's gonna that's gonna be a tough, tough offensive line uh, there at uh, there at uh, South Bend. Is that where they're from? <laughs> but uh, Liam, I got him as a third rounder. Again, he can improve his stock. A lot of people are high on him. I think he's a right tackle only, but that's just me. What do I know? Uh, let's go ahead. Let's go look at our offensive, uh, our interior offensive lineman. And at number one, I got Tyler Bedez. This guy, he's a center out of Wisconsin. He's been the best center in college football for the last two years. I, if he would have came out, if he could have came out last year, I thought he would have been the number one center taken in last year's draft. Um, if he plays similar to how he did last year, he's going to be a first round pick, and maybe even a mid first round pick. Uh, next. We got Ben uh, Breedson, um out of Michigan. Now, this guy is, he's long, man. He's long. He takes up a lot of space. Like, his wingspan, huge. He takes up a lot of space there on that offensive line. It's hard to get around him. Uh, it's just, I want to see a little more consistency in his footwork. Um, yeah, if we can see a little more consistency, I think he can talk himself into that first-round mix. Uh, number three, I got Jack Anderson out of Texas Tech. This guy, I think he's a for sure second potential late first round pick. He's very talented, um, and I don't think he's getting nearly enough buzz. Uh, I got Tommy Kramer out of Notre Dame. Like I said, Notre Dame, very talented offensive line this year. Uh, a lot of people are much higher on him than I am. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I right now got him as a second round, but again, we'll see. Uh, Creed Humphrey out of Oklahoma. A lot of people are real high on uh, well, I say a lot of people. Oklahoma's real high <laughs> on uh, Creed Humphrey. So um, we'll get a chance to come out and see him. He, I mean, he looks the part physically. He looks very dom uh, dominating. So I'm excited to see that. Solomon Kinley at number six. Again, Georgia, very consistent offensive line. They push out talent like nobody's business. So that'll be fun to see. And next we got, uh, next we got, next I got. My boy Zach uh, Shackelford out of Texas. Ooh, so this guy, right? He's very versatile. He's played center. He's played guard. Um, and the NFL, dude. If anything, they love versatility on the offensive line. So that's why I got him in the third round. Uh, Sean Pollard, I got uh, there again. Clemson, extremely talented. Uh, yeah, they're, oh, it'll be hard. I, that's going to be a scary Clemson team for the next two years. <laughs> but we got Sean Pollard here at eight. We got at nine, Daryl Williams. He comes in and he actually, he'll be filling in now for uh, El, Elgdon, uh, Elgton um, Jenkins. Uh, I think, I think Williams will be playing this, playing center. He's played guard last few, uh, last few years, excuse me. So I think he'll be playing the center position this year. So we should look at the uh, wait and see on that. I think he could talk himself into day two. Uh, and then at number 10, I got uh, Tristan Colin Castillo. Um, 
Honestly, I, I, I don't expect him to come out this year. He'll probably come out uh, next year. Uh, he's still very raw, but again, dude. I, again, dude. Uh -huh. uh, he just looks the part. I mean, physically, he is. He looks terrifying. But uh, again, he's very raw, so we'll see. Anyway, that are my offensive linemen to look out for this upcoming college football year. If you like the content, I already mentioned it. Thumbs up, subscribe, be a bro, and subscribe. But next week we hit up on defense. So until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. <laughs> <laughs>